question. We're going to be sending it over to the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, where Lori Meggs is standing by at the Payload Operations and Integration Center to talk about the iServe camera that uh, is getting up and running on the space station today. Lori? Good morning, Brandy. Yes, we're talking about uh, the vantage point of space and what better way or vantage point that they have from space and what better way to look at that and study the planet is through and from the International Space Station. Several cameras aboard the International Space Station are programmed and equipped to do just that, but a new one could help with disasters and environmental problems here on Earth. It's called ISERV, and joining me now is the principal investigator because it's a really long acronym, ISERV is. So, Burgess Howell, tell us first of all what ISERV stands for and then tell us what it is. Yeah, ISERV is the ISS Severe Environmental Research and Visualization System. It's primarily a, uh, a bunch of uh, uh, commercial off-the-shelf hardware which has been modified for use in space. We have a, uh, a digital single lens reflex camera and uh, an astronomical grade telescope, which we control with uh, software, which we're written down here at, uh, at Marshall. And for folks who are not familiar with the SEVERE program, tell us how this relates to that. You know, SEVERE uses satellites, but this is using the space station. Yeah, SEVERE primarily uses other people's assets. We use public and private assets to support environmental research uh, and decision makers around the world. Um, SEVERE is a, a project which is jointly funded, run by NASA, but jointly funded by NASA and USA to, uh, to support environmental decision makers around the world. Uh, one of the tasks that SEVERE has is to provide monitoring, assessment, and uh, uh, response information for disaster responders around the world, and that's where we come in. How does this differ from other cameras aboard the space station? Well, mechanically it's different in that we use a, a different optical system. The, the cameras that the crew uses, for instance, for the crew Earth observation work, are typically Nikons with long lenses, uh, long telephoto lenses. <clears throat> we, use a, um, we use a mirror system, a, a, a catadioptric system, which had, uses mirrors instead of lenses. Uh, it allows us to get um, uh, better color in our images. We don't have some of the artifacts around the edges that the, uh, the crew camera work has. So how did the concept for a camera like this come about? Uh, and what are the Earth applications for this? It's helping with disasters and environmental relief, right? Well, uh, yeah, we're here for disasters and environmental decision makers support. Um, again, that's one of the tasks that SEVERE has as uh, its, its, uh, its mandate from, from NASA and from USAID. Um, we are, we're hoping to use the system as a means to develop experience and expertise for um, Earth imaging from, from station. And um, <clears throat> we'd also uh, like to be able to use it to inform the, the decision processes for uh, more capable instruments in the future. And you developed this. You are the payload developer as well. Developer, yeah. Uh, yeah. And it launched <clears throat> when to the space station? Launched uh, July of last year. Uh, the uh, assembly and installation took place in early January, mid-January of this year. And we have some <clears throat> photos. Uh, how many pics do we have so far? Just brought you five today. All right. Five shots. And we'll start with our first one, our, uh, our first light image that we took in, uh, in Panama. Okay. Uh, Panama shot was in, uh, taken February 17th. And what mm -hmm. you see on the screen there is uh, the Rio San Pablo uh, near a little uh, town called uh, Veraguas in, uh, in Panama on the Pacific coast. It's a very important estuarine environment in the Panamanian economy. Uh, supports a, a thriving local fishery and it's a, a nesting habitat for a variety of uh, local and, and uh, uh, migrating waterfowl as well as a, a wide range of mammal species. Now to get these photos, do you program? Yeah, yeah, we camera? do. We do program the system. We, we can either run the system from, um, we can either run the system manually um, from, from our science operations center here at, at, at Marshall. Um, where we can uh, opportunistically take take shots as we go over a specific target, or we can uh, we can use what we call a time command mode, where we send up a series of commands that can include things like telescope pointing commands, uh, camera adjustment commands, settings, that sort of thing, plus um, a, uh, a a time and a duration for exposure. So we can shoot either three frames per second or seven frames per second for just about as long as we'd like to. We say we can shoot from Portland, Oregon, to Portland, Maine, nonstop. Nice. I, I need that camera. Let's take a look at the next photo. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, next shot is uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. This was taken a couple of weeks after the first one. Uh, what you see there, the large body of water over the corner there, that's Lake Pontchartrain. The Mississippi River uh, snakes through, uh, through New Orleans uh, just underneath it there. Um, that, that bend in the river, that's the crescent that gives the Crescent City its name, as a matter of fact. Uh, New Orleans is kind of an interesting area for us. It's uh, the typical sort of response area that we'd be looking at for things like, like floods. New Orleans mean uh, elevation is about two meters, about six feet below sea level. So they are very susceptible to flooding as we found out during Hurricane Katrina. 
And the next photo, I know you're not looking for pretty photos, but this is a pretty photo, I think. Yeah, one of the nice things about uh, being able to sit in the control room and, and uh, watch the uh, the data come down is I do get to pick over the, the nice pictures. And this one is a shot from Western Libya taken uh, early this month. This is an area called the Wadi Ashati. And uh, the formation that you see there is what's called star dunes. It's uh, it's not the typical wave-like uh, dune pattern. It's, uh, it's from winds that come from various directions at uh, different times of the year. Um, it's important, this type of area is important to us because one of our, one of our uh, areas of interest is, is water security. This is a very arid area and uh, water is a very valuable commodity there. Next photo. The next shot is, uh, this is Peloponnesos, Greece, uh, also taken early this month. Uh, you're looking at a, a little town there called Kilata, um, looking out across the, uh, the Mediterranean, across the Argolic Gulf. Um, Peloponnesos is, uh, is interesting to us because it's a, a, an area that's, that's prone to earthquakes. Uh, it's part of the, it's, it lies on the earthquake belt, the seismic and volcanic activity belt that runs all the way from the Mediterranean across southern Asia and through the Pacific Rim all the way actually down into uh, Central America. Uh, so this is the type of area where we'd be interested in seeing effects from earthquakes or volcanism. And you say probably about 5,000 photos taken so far, frames taken yeah. so far, right? Yeah, we, we shot about 5,000 frames at, uh, at approximately 500 targets. So we have a lot of multiple uh, images. Like I said, we shoot three to seven frames per second. So we wind up a lot of coverage on particular areas as we go over. I'd like to see them all, but one more. We one get? more, yeah, sure. This is, this is central Algeria. This is uh, one I threw in for my own edification. Um, uh, I have, have a little bit of geology training, so uh, this is interesting to me. This is a, 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 an area in, uh, in central Algeria called Tamrasset. It's uh, 200 miles north of a small area called the Ngasa uh, Mountains. Um, it's a, a very interesting area because of all the exposed sedimentary formations and uh, the, uh, the large elliptical formation that you see there is uh, what's called a, an, an eroded anticline dome. Uh, I don't know if there's any oil exploration going on in there, but um, oil men who uh, <laughs> like these things know that any client domes are a good place to find petroleum. So, And we have seen petroleum exploration nearby, so we know that this area is interesting to them. All right, Burgess, let me know if you find some oil there. And I, I could look okay. at these pictures all day. They're gorgeous uh, and great work going on. Great, thank Thanks you. so much for, thank you for joining us. us today. And that'll do it for us from the Payload Operations Integration Center at Marshall Space Flight Center. Now back to you at Mission Control in Houston.